There are many accessibility issues that can easily be identified without having a highly technical background. This video offers a few simple techniques that you can use to identify some common web accessibility problems. The first technique I'm going to demonstrate uses a free online web accessibility evaluation tool called WAVE. To use WAVE, go to wave.webaim.org, type in the web page address you wish to evaluate, and hit enter. WAVE will place color-coded icons over the page you are testing. These icons provide feedback on accessibility errors, alerts, and features. The sidebar to the left of the page provides useful summary information. Wave was created primarily for web developers, so don't worry if you don't understand everything you see. For now, focus on the red icons, which indicate accessibility errors that will need to be addressed. If you're not sure what an icon means, click on it and select More Information. Documentation with helpful information will appear on the sidebar. Depending on the page you're evaluating, sometimes it's difficult to see all the icons correctly. Selecting the No Styles button in the sidebar will remove the visual styling from the page. Although this page will look different, the icon should now be visible. Lastly, choose the Contrast button to identify low contrast text that may be difficult for some people to read. Next, make sure you can use your keyboard alone to navigate. Some users with motor disabilities, as well as those who are blind, have difficulty navigating the web using a mouse. Because of this, all web content must be accessible using the keyboard only. To test this, use the Tab key to navigate through the page and the Enter key to perform an action. Use Shift Tab to go backward. If you can't get to what you want, or if your cursor gets trapped and can't move, the page probably has an accessibility problem for users who rely on keyboard navigation. If you are using Safari, you will need to enable this by going to Safari, Preferences, Advanced, and then checking the Press tab to highlight each item in a web page option. As you continue navigating with the keyboard, check for the following issues. Ensure the keyboard navigation order is logical. It should basically match the visual reading order of the page. For example, navigation first, followed by the main content, then the footer. When you tab to a link with the keyboard, it should be highlighted, often with a dashed outline. If you don't see this outline, this may indicate a serious issue that should be addressed. Check for things that only work with a mouse, such as a navigation menu that expands when the user hovers over it. Attempt to navigate the same area with the keyboard. Some sites have a link at the beginning of the page that allows users to skip over the top navigation to the main content of the page. If your site has this feature, navigate to this link using the tab key and press enter to activate the link. Ensure the screen visually jumps over the navigation to the beginning of the page. Hit tab again to make sure that focus goes to the next link on the page. If it jumps back to the top of the page, or if focus never moves from the top of the page in the first place, then the skip link is probably broken. If your site has any pop-up boxes like a date picker or warning dialog, then make sure that you can navigate and close these boxes with the keyboard. The escape key should also close them. Next, you will want to make sure your page works well when content is enlarged. Some users with visual disabilities enlarge page content for readability, but enlarging content on a page can sometimes cause layout problems. To test this, make the page content larger by pressing Ctrl and then plus on Windows and Command and plus on Mac. Zoom the page several times to make sure everything is still readable, especially images with text. Ctrl or Command and minus makes the content smaller. Ctrl or Command and the number 0 will return the page to the default size. By default, zooming enlarges everything on the page, including images. However, some users only enlarge text, so you need to test this as well. The settings to enlarge text only are different in each browser. If you are using Firefox, go to View, Zoom, and then select Zoom Text Only. On Safari, go to View, Zoom Text Only. For Internet Explorer, select View Text Size. In Chrome, text can only be resized in the Settings menu, so we do not recommend Chrome for this test. Once you've enabled text-only zooming, enlarge the page to at least 150% and up to 200%, or about 3-4 to four steps. Make sure none of the text becomes hidden or unreadable. It's fine if the text wraps to a new line, or the page doesn't look the same. Finally, check your site for a few other common accessibility issues. The page title is the text that appears in your browser tab. Make sure this is unique and descriptive, as it will be read by some assistive technologies. 
Look for generic link text such as click here or more info. Generic links like these can be confusing to screen reader users navigating through links in the page and should be replaced with more descriptive link text. For example, this more link should be changed to violin case, full story. If you have any videos on your page, make sure they have accurate captions. If you're linking to a YouTube video, make sure the captions are correct and not the automatically generated captions. These are almost never accurate. These techniques will help you check for many important accessibility issues, but there are still a number of accessibility problems that will require more thorough technical evaluation. We recommend you also seek the guidance of developers or evaluators with experience in web accessibility, as well as individuals with disabilities. This video is meant to be used in companionship with the Goals Cheat Sheets, which are non-technical, one-page accessibility resources. To view these cheat sheets or for more information on the Goals Project, visit ncdae.org.